Hello, good afternoon. This is Connie Chu from Crazy Asian for Men's. I'm now in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It is about 32 degrees Celsius and about 87 degrees Fahrenheit. I am about to review the secret, the big secret of how I've been able to do so many kinds or varieties of ferments in such short time. I mean really a lot and also with a success rate of about 90%. The other 10% is because of negligence. <laughs> and the secret lies in this device, a technology, an electrolytes device from Japan. Now what this uh, device does, it produces seven types of waters at different pH. Now, I'm going to be showing you the different pH of at least five types of water from the machine. Now, as you can see that it looks like water, right? Is water really the same? Now, let's find out. I have this pH tester from Japan. And I'm going to be dropping the pH testers into the five types of water from the machine. Two drops. Two drops. Two drops. This is the secret for creating delicious ferments. This is really the first time that I'm presenting to the fermentation for community and in a big way like this. Remember I asked you a question, is water really the same? They are different. For this, this is pH 11.5 water, pH 2.5. PH6, PH7, and PH9.5. For drinking or for cooking, PH is from PH8.5, 9.0, and 9.5. That's why I said there are altogether seven types of PH produced from this machine from Japan. For some of you who are experienced fermenters, has it ever occurred to you of how else you could enhance the flavors or improve the taste and flavors. The other way is using the spices and herbs. However, I'm talking about really to raise the level one notch higher. So, of course, the cleaning process is very, very important and the kind of waters that we are using to clean the fresh produce and even the meat. Now, understanding the kind of world that we live in, especially food is so important. Remember, you're what you eat. In Malaysia, we are on average consuming about four teaspoons of pesticides per day. Now, if you talk about having more than four teaspoons of sugar, it's already bad enough. But how about uh, consuming like four teaspoons more or more than four teaspoons of pesticides, chemical stuff in our body? It's really bad. Now, having said that, everyone knows that um, most of the fresh produce or the herbs or the spices or even the meat, they are full of hormones, full of pesticides, full of herbicides, fungicides, insecticides. And what are you going to do about it? So let me show you how I'm able to use a pH 11.5 to clean out the food chemicals. I'm going to put this aside. Let me just show you what I do with the 11.5 water, pH 11.5 water. And this is pH 2.5 water. These two are produced via electrolysis of salt water in this machine. 
inside here there is a salt water salt water tank which no other electrolysis machine have this special feature all right so let's say for example i'm going to be washing So I'm going to be showing you a few ingredients which I normally use for fermentations and I would wash it with the pH 11.5 water first. I'm going to use spring onion as well. Remember when you're making kimchi or some Asian ferments, spring onion is really essential. And I'm going to take the uh, tap water to make comparisons. This is a bigger bottle of the pH 11.5 water. Now just to show you that there is really a difference, I'm going to be using a pH tester to show you the tap water. Tap water and the pH. So this is tap water and this is kangen, strong kangen water at 11.5. So this is what we normally do with the cleaning of food. Using tap water, using tap water, by the way this is walnuts, who actually wash walnuts? Most of the time, the bakers, the people who make salad, they are actually throwing this whole thing into the salad without washing or, or the most they would do is uh, roasting it. It's really shocking to see what comes out at the end of the soaking and washing. Before I go on to talk about the pesticides, let me talk about the tap water first. What's inside the tap water? I have a chlorine tester here. I'm going to take this away. Tap water and uh, pH 11.5 water. Chlorine testers. If there is chlorine in the water, the water will show colors. If the chlorine is filtered away, there's no color. All right, so can you see what's in your tap water? Let me show you close, closer. So this is tap water. This is strong kangen water at pH 11.5. The chlorine is filtered away. Now what is going to happen with the chlorine in the tap water when you soak the vegetable? the chlorine gets soaked up into your fresh produce. Let me use the onion and uh, soak it and see what happened. 
Imagine if this is your vegetables that you're going to be ferment and you soak it in the tap water. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here and see what happened after this. So let us check what comes out of the... Okay. Can you see uh, what has come out after the washing? And the rice. Remember how you would eat your rice every day? Rice is our staple food for the Asians and how you would, uh, after cleaning, use it to make your koji. Oh. Alright, I'm going to be showing you the onion in the tap water. What happened after soaking? Where did the chlorine go? Let me come closer to you again. Where did the uh, chlorine go to? Look. So this is what happened when you use the uh, tap water to wash all kinds of produce and your meat stuff. So I'm going to leave this behind. Next would be here. Can you see what comes up from the rice? Walnuts. In fact, I need to have a white background to show you the difference. Okay, I'm going to come closer to you. From the rice, From the walnuts, this is tap water, this is strong kangen water at 11.5. This is from tomatoes, tomatoes represent, this is from cherry tomatoes, this represents most of the fresh produce in the market. Spring onion, not so obvious, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. I'm going to be showing you how the high pH water is able to break down the surfactant or the wax light or the oil-based pesticides. Imagine that this sesame oil is pesticides because it's oily. So pesticides, pesticides. If you're using tap water to clean your food, tap water, nothing is going to happen. When you're using the high pH water, look what happened. So it breaks the oil. It emulsifies the surfactant, the oil-based pesticides. Because I've been using this technology for the past nine and a half years, way before I started doing fermentation. Because the fermentation project I have only undertaken since uh, four, about four and a half years ago. Now, what happened when you use the water to wash your produce?
it tastes like the original taste. We like to use um, tap water to wash the produce. Remember the chlorine gets inside. Um, it's flat. The flavor is just flat. It's as though something is like covering the the the, the taste of the tomatoes. And for the walnuts, the walnuts will represent most of the most of the nuts and seeds or even dry fruits. Remember when the, the nuts are removed off their shelves, they are exposed to oxidation. That's why therefore it turns rancid. And when you taste all kinds of nuts and seeds, this, this, they always have this a uh, rancid taste, which is why I do not like it. Especially when you buy granola or anything that has got mixed and uh, mixed nuts and seeds, I don't like it because it tastes rancid and it smells rancid. So by washing with the strong kangen water at eleven point five pH eleven point five. You're able to reverse the aging. You're able to reverse the oxidation of the food. And it makes the nuts all kinds. All right. Taste so refresh and it is a taste that you have long forgotten. Like I have advised my friend who makes granola to sell. I said, please, if you are able to wash every single ingredient inside the mix that will make a whole lot of uh, difference so she did that and oh my god I just felt so in love and I've been eating non-stop yeah and also once you have uh, washed it with the strong kangen water it doesn't become soggy okay it tastes even uh, nice really nice as it is and then if you roast it further it can keep for a long time. See what comes up from the rice. Imagine this if you're making your koji. If you're able to wash the rice properly and make it to koji. And using koji to ferment other things like uh, make into other things like sake, miso, uh, show you soy sauce it will ferment into a a, a a nice taste and flavor that you have never experienced before it's a clean taste that's what I call and what else do we use the uh, pH 11.5 water for uh, when it comes to the meat it is like a natural tenderizer it is especially good to clean up the meat stuff we are talking about the chicken the beef, pork, etc. Most of this meat, whether they are in frozen form or you have just bought it from the uh, butchers, they smell, they have certain smell. When we call it over here, we say piggy, it is, is smells the pig, it smells piggy, it smells chicken, it smells like, it smells cow, cow smell, is some kind of smell that is really bad. And also when you cook it, it is really dry inside. There's not enough uh, moisture. Especially when you sous vide. When you do a sous vide, you sous vide cook the, uh, the meat stuff. Although it is tender, however, it doesn't taste good. If you are able to clean, soak the meat in the pH 11.5 water, you see what comes out? The blood in the meat the oxidized blood will be oozing out and clean again with a pH 2.5 water which will kill bacteria and all and the meat smells good before you do the cooking on top of that if you intend to sous vide do that you know you could uh, this is a pig's ear this is a piece of uh, pork belly which I have soaked in uh, P11.5 
cage 11.5 water for a couple of hours before I marinate with the koji and you could do a sous vide after the sous vide cooking trust me it is like tastes so clean and tender and smooth it is a moment of joy it is a moment when you take a first bite and you're like oh my god sous vide cannot even beat it yeah for the meat stuff it's really good especially you know as you know that uh, the meat are uh, some of these poultry or the meat stuff they're injected with lots of hormones and all that so it will be able to wash out as much as it can next would be the ph 2.5 water what it does best it kills bacteria within 30 seconds and about 99.9 percent .9%. so when i'm doing my fermented food stuff i don't have to boil big pots of water to sterilize everything and you have to use a hair dryer to dry it what i do is even in a small bottle It smells like chlorine. However, this is water-based. Remember, if you use any kind of uh, sanitizers or antiseptic products, you cannot shoot in the mouth. You cannot shoot in the eyes. Right? And you cannot spray on the face. But with this water at pH 2.5, you could do a check on sodium hypochlorous acid which is produced from electrolysis of salt water yeah now just before i stuff my fresh produce into the bottle i'll just do this and the cap if i'm making now even with this bottle Pull out the rubber ring, sterilize every part, spray or soak in the strong acidic water. Just wait for a moment, at least 30 seconds. If you are making your beverages, fermented beverages, either this or just pour the strong acidic water into the bottle and you are ready to pour your ferment inside. And also remember when we are doing fermented food stuff, if you are making a big batch like a commercial amount, you still need to clean the vegetables. But of course, in a commercial level, they do not use their hands. Okay? And also, therefore, why people are saying that uh, although we know, we the fermenters, we know that the fermented foods or beverages have lots of health benefits yet why is it why is it they say that it is no good that's because they are being pasteurized and they are added with something to preserve that so-called fermented food right and not the real fermented one where we do not pasteurize it and of course at home we make into small batches in fact, nowadays, because there's an abundance of fresh produce and all kinds of things that as much as you want, you could get it. Even if you cannot get it locally, you could uh, order online and things like that. Unlike in the past, where fermented food are to be consumed during the time, like especially during the winter time, where they do not get fresh produce, so they eat the fermented food stuff. Right? Like in my country, we are sunny throughout we have only a one season so we make short ferments we do not keep it for too long because of the weather condition it ferments really really fast so fast that you cannot cope so i normally make the most this size in the past when i first started doing fermented food stuff i was really greedy i make into big big containers and it turns sour really fast i don't like sour ferment it 
it hurts the teeth. I'm not sure about how you feel about it. When we make small batches, we really want good bacteria from your own body system. So we need to clean up our hands. So once that is done, don't touch anything. Just go straight to your produce when you're making kimchi or sauerkraut or any kind of vegetables, right? And your containers are already clean, remember? Okay, if I want to touch it, okay, I need to sterilize my hand again. So I'm going to be stuffing the vegetables inside this container full, okay, without contaminate your hands with any other things, do not touch at all. So once this is done, put your weight or whatever that is already sterilized with the strong acidic water ready and stuff it inside and cap it. That's it. Very fast. Yeah. Now let's say for some vegetables, even though it is organic vegetables, it really doesn't mean that uh, it is entirely clean because the organic vegetables are exposed to the acid rain, to the dust in the atmosphere, to the pollutants. So even when I have cleaned the organic vegetable with strong kangen water, there is very light yellow that show up. Remember, oil is yellow in color. Yeah. Now, if I am eating organic vegetables, it means it doesn't have pesticides. However, it has lots of parasites. So in order to prevent, to, to make sure that they are eliminated as well, we want to use your fresh produce and soak it for just about three minutes. So remember these cherry tomatoes, the pesticide is out and now I'm cleaning with the strong acidic water to kill the bacteria about not more than three minutes. And this is really safe. You don't have to worry about the uh, parasitic problems uh, after that because for anybody who have been eating lots of raw food, you could do a, a blood test and to see whether there is uh, parasites in the blood, which has uh, happened to some of my friends, surprisingly. So that's all for the strong kangen water and strong acidic water. They are a pair. to remove what I call the food condom. <laughs> yeah, this, this word, this term comes from me. And so besides uh, cleaning of the fresh produce, the meat stuff with the strong kangen water at pH 11.5 water and also the strong acidic water at pH 2.5, both are water-based. I would also clean up the eggs. Remember, eggs has got salmonella bacteria, which is quite uh, hazardous. And if it's not careful, it can cause life. So when we want to make sure that it doesn't cause cross-contamination in the house, you know, because remember that when you hold the egg trays and you open the fridge door, the contaminant, the bacteria and everything will be there as well. If your child goes to open the fridge and chances are the bacteria will be transferred to their hands as well, right? So what, we, what I normally do is I will clean up. First thing first, when I come home, I clean up the eggs first before any other things. Clean up with the pH 11.5 water, brush it and clean up and you can see that lots of dirty stuff that comes out. and soak it in the strong acidic water for about just three minutes that will do and then you feel safe to keep it in the fridge 
On top of that, what else do we do with the strong acidic water? Remember when you're doing cutting, chopping of your vegetables and everything, you need to have a clean and sanitized chopping board and the knife as well. So this is what I normally do, sanitize. Can you imagine if you are having to sanitize all this in hot water? You have to wait. You cannot do it right away because it's very hot. And you need to have a bigger space to do this. So for me, this is so easy. And your chopping board. So you do not have to use any kind of uh, soap detergent to clean up your chopping board because otherwise, the smell of the soap will go into your ferments as well. Next, I'm going to be explaining to you how I would use a pH 9.5 water and also a uh, mild acidic water at pH 6. And I'm going to be showing you what kangen water at pH 9.5 is all about. We just called it 9.5 water. This kangen water has three special properties. Number one, antioxidant. Number two, alkaline pH. Number three is microclustered property. Microclustered means they are small in molecules. So let me show you what it really means. Now again, this is tap water, the regular water. Nobody will drink the tap water outright. Now, what it really means by antioxidant, we have a meter to measure the antioxidant. Surprise? Now this is what we call a ORP chart. ORP stands for oxidation reduction potential. And what we want to look out for is the negative reading. If it is positive, that means they are bad. They are dead water over the other side. As for anything that has got antioxidants, as you can see from here, all kinds of berries, all kinds of fruits. However, if you do not clean and wash them properly, it doesn't serve the purpose. The green tea has got good antioxidant as well, provided you are able to get the top quality green tea from Japan, perhaps. And look at the cod liver oil. It is about negative 200, provided you are able to get one good top quality cod liver oil without he heavy metals. As for kangen water, the reading can be ranged between 3, negative 3 to 400 to negative 5, 6, 7, depending on the source of water. So let's check it out. Mark, do you want to show the pick up the book and show the reading? Okay. So this is an ORP meter. We use it to measure the an antioxidant in the water. For tap water, let's check it out. It goes up to positive 500 plus. Now, let's check out the Kangen water reading. Can you see? Look at the reading. Wow. And the antioxidant in measured in the hydrogen is measured in millivolts. So we had so we had negative three hundred over millivolts 
which means to say the water has mild electricity. The ability is the antioxidation of the food. When I mentioned about the antioxidant in the water, what it really does? If let's say we are not talking about preparing, doing food preps or making food out of it, if you drink this water, it will be able to reverse your aging by at least 10 years. Look at me, I think I'm a good example. This is serious. So in order to know what is antioxidation, you got to understand what is oxidation. Oxidation is like this. Most of the food that we buy, unless they are freshly harvested from your own garden or from your friend's own garden, otherwise most of this uh, fresh produce, when they go through a journey of transportation, by the time they get to the, to the storehouse, the warehouses, and then to the supermarket and to when it reaches you eventually they are somewhat oxidized yeah so when i clean the fresh produce with the ph 11.5 water i will rinse my produce with the kangen water 9.5 again to make sure that they are really clean yeah the next property for the kangen water at ph 9.5 is the pH, this is alkaline pH and this is tap water, so they are really different. The kangen water is made by electrolysis of tap water. So the clean water, depending on your location, because some locations really have got uh, different kind of source water, like mud water, rain water, acidic water from the ground because that ground could be quite contaminated because of the industrial um, or factories that uh, release lots of toxin into the ground. And some areas like UK, Europe or India or some parts of like uh, Thailand, Vietnam and all those or even in China, the water are generally very hard, has got high TDS. So the source water needs to be treated first with a pre-filter set and the clean water will go into the machine it goes through another filtration inside you can change yourself in fact this machine is a DIY unit do it yourself so you could uh, change the filter as soon as 6,000 liters of water is used and it will give you a voice prompt it speaks to you yeah, so you could uh, change it and the clean water, the treated water, please no RO water, okay, it must be natural water with still with the minerals inside, goes through this inner filter, the filter will filter away heavy metals, chlorine, chlorine and also bacteria. 0.5 microns and still the natural minerals is able to pass through and allow the electrolysis to happen yeah, and produce this kangen water for a temporary property because the ORP reading I showed you today a moment ago it will be gone it will oxidize when you want to drink the kangen water you do not need to boil the water so you can drink straight for the special antioxidant property inside the water however if you are boiling it that's fine as well because it will make food it will make food taste really good why i'm going to be showing you the next property of kangen water so the first is antioxidant with a negative reading of a negative 300 plus in fact because i made the kangen water like about five hours ago if I am making it fresh from the tap the negative reading will really go up very very high the next property after the antioxidant is the alkaline pH and the last property is the micro clustered property in order to show you the micro clustered property of the kangen water I'm going to be using two tea bags to show you 
what it means by when you use the kangen water to do cooking it makes food taste so good if you make tea the tea is so smooth and without bitterness being drawn out and when you make coffee with kangen water oh my goodness it uh, reduces the acidity in the uh, in the coffee okay look at this imagine this is your food or this is your body which water that you drink will give you hydration or which water that you cook with will draw out the food flavor even better and you can reduce the use of your raw ingredients and which means it is a profit for some of the restaurants and cafes let's check it out tap water and kangen water Can you see which tea comes out first? Can you see this? What if I make extra tea? Let me take uh, three drops for these two cups. All right. With normal tap water or regular water or RO water or any kind of uh, mineral water, a uh, bottled mineral water, can you see? Is it coming out? As compared to using kangen water. Can you see the difference? It draws out the tea further which means it gives you hydration and also when you do cooking remember the first part we use strong kangen water at pH 11.5 to clean the food the food already tastes somewhat good and when using the kangen water to do cooking to cook your rice to cook your stew soup or whatever the feeling let me just express to you that moment when I first started to explore more. When I used the kangen water to cook the stew and the soup, and when I took a sip and drank, and I was like, oh my god. I was like in awe for just a few seconds. Cannot, I cannot describe that good taste to you. It's just clean taste that you cannot get anywhere. Yeah. So what does the microclustered property mean? It means that for water they have come into in cluster sizes. Regular water has a big cluster of water. Once they are electrolytes in the machine, it restructured to from 15 to 20 molecules per cluster to 5 to 6 molecules per cluster and so what I, how do I use the pH 9.5 water here? let me just show you I use pH 9.5 water to boil the soybeans and the boiling time is fast because of the small molecules in the water we also call it small water and it tastes really good before you make into your miso remember i use the ph 11.5 to clean first and use the 9.5 water to boil it and i make my tofu and i make the cook the soybeans for making natto 
and also miso. Now imagine if you are able to make your own koji. Wash the rice with the 11.5, cook with the pH 9.5 water, and then combine together with the soybeans and make into your clean tasting miso paste. This is my miso paste which I made myself. And for tepache, the Mexican fermented pineapple skin. Remember the pineapple skin has got lots of parasites, germs and bacteria. I cannot imagine how would anybody make a tepache out of it without really cleaning properly. And it also has lots of pesticides. So I use the 11.5 water to clean up the whole pineapple and I cut and I spray. I spray the pH 2.5 water onto the skin and then I submerge everything with the pH 9.5 water, add sugar, add the spices, leave it there. It ferments really fast because of the antioxidant property in the water. And my fish garum, the fish sauce, the Laotian fish sauce, I made sure that when I flew over to Laos, I brought along, check in 11.5 uh, water and a bottle of 2.5 water just to buy a kg of the fish over there, clean up the fish before I ferment it. My sauerkraut, my chili sauce. My chili sauce, of course, the chili has been cleaned with, um, with the 11.5 water and then I blended it with the 9.5 water. I clean up the pineapple, remove the skin, add the flesh into this chili and ferment it. The fragrance is just clean and nice. And the skin is to be fermented into tepache. Yep. So this is what I do with the... Um, oh yeah, one more thing. The kombucha. The kombucha. I don't need to boil water to make my kombucha. Remember just now I showed you that how the tea water is being uh, drawn out so fast because of the small water uh, structure. So what I do is my tea leaf, I do not use tea bags because tea bags are really dirty and also full of uh, pesticides. I clean the tea leaf with the 11.5 water. Tea leaf has a lot of mold and also pesticides as well. So I clean it with the 11.5 water and I squeeze out two or three times and then I, I just steep it with the 9.5 water. I don't need to boil it. So just in a couple of hours or even overnight, the tea water is drawn out without bitterness. And then I just add my good quality sugar in it to sweeten the tea water and I put my scoby inside. The scoby is always so healthy looking. And of course, the whole bottle has got to be sprayed with the 2.5 water to sterilize first. And one last thing about the pH 6 water. Oh yeah, I need to mention that if you are using the pH 9.5 water, drink with your whiskey or even the worst quality whiskey it just bring out the good taste the good fragrance of the whiskey <laughs> so many things this can do <laughs> yep lastly would be the mild acidic water at pH 6.0 This is my spray bottle. Oh yeah, this is the one. <laughs> With this small acidic water, the pH is similar to the skin pH. I use this to spray on my face all the time. So much so that I do not need to use any kind of skincare anymore. It's just this water. Can you believe it? I couldn't believe it before. Now, what do we do with this P6 water? I don't really use a lot for the fermentation part, right? However, 
This pH 6 water, it is good when you use it to boil your pasta, any kind of noodles, rice noodle, pasta, spaghetti. With the pH 6.0 water, when you blanch it, it gives you an al dente effect. So it's like toy toy kind of effect <laughs> with your pasta, with your noodle. Yeah? This water is also best for boiling eggs. It helps you to remove the shells easily. Yep. Yes, I've come to the end of the session. I hope you have uh, followed me closely. And because from this device, I know it has been just too much information and too much usages from a device like this. And if you have any questions, you could uh, send me a direct message to my Instagram private message at Crazy Asian for Men's or even on my Facebook page, Crazy Asian for Men's as well. And if there are lots of questions, I could set up a Zoom session with all of you for you to ask me questions and about how to use this technology. Probably I am the only one in the world who is sharing with you this information in using this technology for the fermented food item because there are so many other usages for the other things like for people who are not well, for the pets, for the horses, for the beauty industry, for the spa industries. So you could ask me questions and I am looking at uh, working closely with you and I'm also looking for a representative of your region. If you are the one, you could uh, text me a message and let's talk about this. Yeah? And let's teach the world how to use a Kangen water machine to make delicious, good tasting, hygienic, clean, fermented food stuff. Thank you very much. Bye. I love you all. <laughs>